is Brent of the Brookbush Institute and in this video we're going over vibration or percussive release for the upper trapezius, levator scapulae, splenii, and rhomboids. I'm going to have my friend Mike come out. He's going to help me demonstrate. Now just because this is a really cool modality and Mike really likes this and it feels really good doesn't mean you get away with not doing assessment. So make sure that you are working towards good objective outcomes. If I was doing these particular muscles, chances are I saw maybe arms fall forward or shoulders elevate during the overhead squat assessment. Or maybe I did a, a, a cervical uh, evaluation or cervical um, assessment and I noticed flexion and extension restriction or maybe some rotation restriction or I did goniometry and I was going to measure before and after for lateral flexion. So with all these techniques we start superficially, try to get all of the muscle tissue with a larger piece, so either the flat round piece or uh, the, the foam ball piece here. I tend to like the flat round piece a little bit better for these particular tissues. Not to mention it'll slide over Mike's shirt here a little easier. This stuff does work better over clothing, right? So having a nice t-shirt that goes up nice and high on the neck is actually an advantage for these particular techniques. And then we're going to start a little counterintuitively on the higher setting which is going to be two in the case of the upper body and then we'll go back and get like the trigger points and the denser spots with a lower setting and a smaller tool so that we can drive a little deeper. Alright, so here's what this is going to look like. I'm just going to start in a way that I know I'm going to systematically get all of the tissue. So maybe I want to start with the upper trap here. Right, so I'll start up at the base of his neck and kind of work my way down this way. Making sure I palpate the acromion shelf. I don't want to I don't want this thing over bone. That's gonna hurt actually really bad. All right, so maybe I even do it this way first. How's that feel, Mike? I like it. All right, once we get, so I kind of know where his acromion shelf is. I can kind of move my hand back here. All right, and you guys can see, when I said systematically, I really, I, I'm just kind of creating almost like, like if any of you guys have mowed a lawn, you just kind of go back and forth making sure you hit every bit of tissue. And while I'm doing it, I'm kind of noticing how much pushback I get and maybe noticing Mike's face. Uh, I have a mirror here that I can see that you guys can't see off camera, but I'm noticing Mike's face. Is there any place where he kind of tenses up a little bit, like things are more sensitive? Just kind of keeping mental note. Now, of course, as I get down towards the spine of the scapula, I might want to use my thumb to mark off that border again. Kind of go right above that border. come through here. So that's, that's a lot of the upper trap right there. And then I can kind of come up closer to the spine now and maybe I want to keep a thumb over the spinous processes so I don't hit those. Kind of go up towards the levator scapulae. Now I know some of you guys are thinking, well, how far up the neck can you go? And I think you could probably do a lot of the, the posterior neck here. What I can tell you is it's not particularly comfortable to get close to the occiput. As I get higher up on his neck, he's gonna feel more and more rattling. And I don't think this thing has the, the amplitude to be able to do any damage or anything. Like, you're not shaking the brain, so to speak. It's just not a very comfortable feeling. So, I'll go up the neck a little bit, but you know, once I get past about halfway here, I usually just kinda of drop back down I can always address those tissues with a different technique, like for example, I could use that massage blocks on the upper part, all right, on the suboccipital muscles, or I could manually release those, those tissues if you're a licensed manual therapist. Now, as I get off the levator scapulae here and I come even closer to the spine, I'm on my splenii muscles, and he does have a little increase in tissue density here. I notice some up here too, and then you guys saw a video already of as I get down here, I start getting into the rhomboids. And again, I'm gonna use my thumb to mark off that vertebral border of the scapula so I don't just start pressing this thing into bone. He's a little bit more tender in here. Not, not tender is the wrong word, dense. The tissue is just a little bit more dense, gives me a little bit more kickback. Now, once I've gone over all this tissue and I've gotten good releases, and you can see I'm just very slow and methodical. How's that feel, Mike? I love it. Feels good. It does feel really good, I have yeah. to admit. 
Um, you know, I think if, if you let clients, this would be all they wanted all hour. Uh, just make sure you are, again, driving towards ob objective outcomes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over those denser tissues with a smaller piece here. So this is the bullet piece. And I'm gonna show you guys a little trick, a couple little tricks to get deeper into the tissue. So now I'm gonna go on a lower setting. I know that's counterintuitive. We're gonna go more intense by getting on a lower setting. A lower setting is gonna allow you to get deeper into the tissue because when the frequency is real high, you just get kicked out. If I wanna get into his trap a little deeper, I can start here just like we did. All right. But what I can also do now is I can increase the tension in his traps and maybe that'll bring some of that tissue density a little bit more superficial or if I think the trigger point is deeper I can actually shorten the traps and press in a little bit more All right so now I'm putting slack into the trapezius I can do the same trick with the levator scapulae so more tension less tension and so you guys got to remember your joint actions there but like my upper trap will do lateral flexion, it'll do some extension, and then it'll do some contralateral rotation, right? So if I go this way, I stretch it. If I go this way, I shorten it. And then the only difference with the levator scapula is it rotates in the opposite way. So this is stretching the levator scapula. This is shortening the levator scapula. And so you guys can just kind of see, I just kind of control Mike's head and he's still yeah. very comfortable. And just try to get at all these denser areas. Now, if I wanted to get at those rhomboid trigger points and I wanted maybe to get them a little bit more superficial, what I can have Mike do is I can have him take his arm, hold it across his chest like this. He can actually use his other hand to just kind of hold his elbow. There you go. And then now all of this is really nice and superficial for me, and I can even see the vertebral border of his scapula, and I can just get right in here and do that vertebral border. That's a little density there. I'm going to hold that a little bit. Hold that a little bit. Of course, the hypervolt is pretty light, so if I wanted to use a hand to like palpate that tissue for all my manual therapists out there, you definitely could. All right, I could come back up here. You can go ahead and put your arm down. And if I wanted to get a splenii, maybe I have him just go into a little bit of contralateral rotation and flexion. All right, and now that's gonna put some more tension in the splenii and kind of bring that density to you. How's that feel, Mike? It's all been good so far. Yeah. This is gonna, this is definitely gonna help Mike with a little bit of his mobility issues on this side. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys before we go to our close up recap is Mike could lay face down. Go ahead and lay his face down for me, Mike. Now, you can't do all the fancy tricks that I just showed you guys with the neck and lengthening out tissues and all that stuff, but. If by chance you had somebody who just, they didn't like the sitting position, you couldn't get a lot of control, you had a hard time keeping them stable as you were putting the tool down, like they kept leaning forward, you could just have them lay down this way, and more or less, you can access all the same tissues. All right, so here's his rhomboids, here's his splenii, here's his levator scapulae, and here's his upper trap. Like I said, use your same tricks of bordering out those bony protuberances, but you have access to all the same tissue. The only disadvantage with this position is it's harder to control how much tension is in those tissues. I think Mike's loving this position because he has to do even less than he did before. Um, but as patient, as, as important as patient comfort is, our outcomes are even more important. Guys, stay tuned for the close-up recap. Just a quick close-up recap. I wanted to show you guys where I was applying the Hypervolt tool here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using the flat round piece. I'm gonna start on that higher setting. And we're just gonna go over trap, which is kind of this area in here. And so I can draw a little triangle for you guys. So I wanna cover all of that, 
all the way down to the spine of the scapula. Right, so there's the spine of my scapula. I can put my thumb, go over all of this here. We know that levator scapulae goes from the superior angle up the side of the neck here. So I could switch hands, put my thumb over the spinous process so I don't put the percussive tool right into his bony prominences there. Then of course I could do splenii, which are going to be along the side of his spine, kind of in that cervicothoracic junction area. And then we talked about doing the rhomboids, which if I put my fingers here on his vertebral border, I can just kind of come down this way and go along all that muscle from vertebral border to the spine of the scapula here. Now we also talked about how to add a little tension into these muscles or take tension off the trap. So if I was going to add tension to the trap, I go into some flexion, contralateral flexion, and ipsilateral rotation. That's going to add tension. Now if I do the opposite, that's going to give me some slack so that I could potentially get deeper into that muscle, especially if I'm using that other bulleted piece. I could stretch out the levator scapulae by going contralateral flexion, flexion, and contralateral rotation. And again, the same thing, if I wanted to feel like I needed to get deeper into that muscle, I could do just the opposites. For the splenii, it might be helpful to go into some flexion and contralateral rotation. All right, so that'll lengthen those muscles out. And then of course with the rhomboids, I just had Mike give himself a hug, all right? So we brought that arm across, pulled it across, and then I could use my fingertips here to mark off the border and get right in there with, with the tool here. Of course, if I'm gonna do that, chances are, especially with the rhomboids, I'm gonna go ahead with that smaller bullet piece. I think Mike likes this one. Right into that vertebral border where those trigger points tend to, yeah. tend to be very prolific. Lots of trigger points in this area. So there you guys have it. Enjoy using these percussive devices. They are hand savers. Clients tend to love them. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments box below.